My name is Brian and welcome to Ranch Fest Garage. Today we're going to be working on the ultimate dent side Cummins, but more specifically we're going to be working on the 12 valve which we pulled out in the last episode. What we're going to be doing today is removing all the old stuff that went with the 727 transmission and putting on all the new stuff so we can bolt on the ZF6 transmission. So sit down and enjoy. Let's get after it. First thing we're going to do is pull off this flex plate and then we're going to pull off the adapter. Alright, so you probably noticed that I'm using chrome sockets on my impact, which is not the best plan. But my impacts are in my service truck. So this is what I have at home right now. So this is what we're using. Did we get all the bolts? At least some of them. Appears to be. Grab the soft hammer. Oh yeah, we got all the bolts. Okay, while we got this part, I'm gonna go ahead and do a rear main seal, uh, or a rear crank seal, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's just good preventive maintenance. It looks like this one's leaking a little bit. It doesn't look like it's leaking a ton, which is pretty impressive. The motor's, I think, it's got about 140,000, 150. But, I mean, it's all original, as far as I know, with, uh, what, let's say it's a 90, so it's 30, 34 years old. So, that's, for a Cummins 12 valve, that's not, that's not horribly bad. But while we're this far into it, we're going to go ahead and do that. And also, I bought a rear uh, frost plug. I don't know, it's kind of a, an improvement, I guess. I'll show it to you. But anyway, it's supposed to solve all these problems of these popping out. So we'll grab that, we'll throw that on, we'll throw the rear main on, and then we can go to putting new parts on it. Okay, that's freeze plug, frost plug. So according to David Freiberger, these aren't actually frost plugs. They were never designed to expand when the, if the motor, the water in the motor ever froze. What these are, according to Freiberger, is a way to get the sand out after they cast the block. So things you learn on the internet, especially YouTube. So this is just kind of good preventive maintenance. If you ever popped that freeze plug out or whatever you want to call it, if you ever pop that out going down the road and it's on the back of the motor and your firewall's right here, you'd probably never, never be able to get that back in on the side of the road. It would be kind of a disaster. So hopefully this upgrade is worth the money. Hopefully it works out good. Hopefully I never have any problems with it. The idea is to never go back into the back of this motor again. You know, hopefully the freeze plug don't leak, hopefully the rear main don't leak, and hopefully you get a lot more miles of service. However, there's a possibility that I'm just creating more problems because that's, that's happened to me in the past. You try to do the right thing and this rear main seal's not leaking too bad and I throw a new one in it and it leaks worse for whatever reason. Maybe I'm just a bad mechanic, who knows? But uh, maybe this upgrade I'm doing is not all that great. But anyway, it's, it's worth trying, uh, try to better the thing and hopefully it'll pay out dividends when you're down the road and not on the side of the road fixing it. I don't want to get 
too much out of there. Don't want to get too crazy with this. Probably too late. It's too late. Cut your eyes. All right, so I got this off of Amazon. It's from Michigan Motorsports. And this here's a part. So basically what it does, um, it goes in right here and there's two bolts on the back of the head. So it just bolts to the back of the head. So looks like a pretty slick piece. Shouldn't have any problems with that. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna clean up these threads a little bit better to make sure these bolts are gonna go in and stay in. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on that O-ring so it doesn't go in dry and hopefully it seals. If it doesn't seal, I'm gonna be real sad and a little upset, but sometimes these things are a process. Sometimes things go really good and other times not so much. Didn't come with much for instructions, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. So don't quote me on this, but it appears to be a 12 millimeter by a 1.75. We're just gonna run this tap in here real quick. Oh, maybe, that's ugly. There we go. Woo. Starting to get a little worried there. And this is obviously the proper tool. This crescent wrench appears to be getting the job done though. So I'm not 100% certain, but I would almost dare bet that this is the first time that this transmission's been off this motor, that this adapter's been off the motor, and this flex plate's ever been off the motor. I don't think this, everything's, this motor's ever really been worked on. So, can't say that for certain, but kind of think so. It'd probably help if I put the bolts down. Use both hands, I don't know. Oh yeah, I can see silver. Got some gunk out of there. Watch out for the wrench there. Couldn't see it. Too close, too far. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off, pull this out. Oh yeah, that cleaned up pretty nice. I'm kind of thinking these holes have never been used for anything. I'm sure they're in there for a reason for other applications, just not this one. In case you guys didn't know, another, some more worthless Cummins 12 valve knowledge. They put these motors in just about everything. They most definitely didn't just come in the Dodge trucks. They put them in backhoes and they put them in boats and motor homes, probably about anything you can imagine from the factory. And then people like me and putting them in stuff that they don't belong in like Fords, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, more gunk, more, more nastiness coming out of there. Whatever, coming off the back of the motor. Right, I gotta find a little bit of grease. Should I do grease them? Grease or silicone? Should I do grease or silicone? What do y'all think? All right, I'm gonna do silicone. I don't know if it's the best plan, but sometimes it's silicone, just a little extra insurance. Just put a dab around this O-ring. Hopefully it'll slide in there. Hopefully it'll seal up nice. Hopefully good things will happen. Oh yeah, she slipped right in there. All right, so now I'm gonna put a little Loctite on these bolts and then, phone's ringing. And now we're gonna go with a little bit of blue Loctite on these bolts, cause these Cummins, they like to rattle. Much as I love these motors, they are not the smoothest motor. And I'm sure some of y'all are gonna say I probably should have used red Loctite, but you could be right, but someday I might have to undo these bolts and I'm gonna appreciate the blue Loctite, so yeah. All right, so we looked up the torque specs for a 12 millimeter bolt. This was an 8.8, .8, .8, which is like a grade, is that a grade five, something like that. Anyway, it said it was roughly 100 newtons meters. So I did my little conversion chart on my torque wrench and it comes out to about 75 foot pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 75 foot pounds and y'all can tell me I'm wrong, whatever, but at least I tried. So here we go. Uh, that feels tight. That's almost, that's almost scaring me.
Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna pull threads there. I'm gonna back this off a little bit. Let me see what 50 foot pounds feels like. I definitely got her at 50. I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit. We'll go about. Okay, I'm gonna call that good because I'm scared to death of ripping those threads out. Okay, so now we got this in place. Uh, shouldn't have any problems with that, hopefully. And we're gonna move on to the rear main seal. I got the whole kit, so it comes with a gasket and all that fun stuff. I'm probably at some point gonna regret not doing the pan gasket, but uh, it's not leaking horribly bad right now, so we're gonna run with it. We're just gonna do the rear main. I could possibly do the pan gasket with it in the truck if I ever had to. Hopefully I never have to, so here we go. This is not the proper tool for this, but I'm just gonna give a little left tap, pop it off. Hopefully it comes off without destroying something. Okay, there we go. This right here is the rear main seal, and it seals up the crankshaft right here. At least that's the idea. So we're gonna throw a new one in it, a new gasket, and move on with life. All right, I'm gonna stuff some paper towels in here to help keep some of the gasket material from falling down into that pan. Hopefully it helps a little bit. Probably before I really start to run this motor again, I'll probably put some new fresh oil in it, but still don't want this stuff in the pan if you can help it. Yeah, that gasket's been on there for 400 years. They make about 4,000 different type of gasket remover tools and whatnot. Let me know in the comments what you like, what you use, what works best for this. I've got a few different things, but I hate removing gaskets, so especially stubborn ones like this one. Yeah, they're all about the same. Right where those gaskets bolt, that's where they like to stick. Well, there we go, she's off. Tired, need a break. Woo! So this is the new kit. This is everything it comes with. This is the new gasket. This is the new seal. And it also comes with like an inner sleeve to help you install the rear main seal so you don't roll the seal or damage it. I'm not sure what that's for. Yeah, I don't know. But I kind of messed up. I kind of started hacking away at that pan seal. So even though I wasn't going to, I'm probably gonna do it now. I'm probably gonna put a Now's as good a time to do it as any. Only problem is I don't have one here tonight, so we'll figure that out. So I think that rear main was leaking pretty good. You can see this was the bottom and you can see where it was leaking and then coming down around and leaking right there. So this is a good plan. Until the new one leaks. Gotta be more optimistic. The new one's not gonna leak. There's probably a tool for this. But I don't have one currently, so we're gonna do the wrong thing the right way or the right thing the wrong way or something. We're gonna knock this seal out of here. Hopefully it goes well. Oh yeah, a piece of cake. Tired of scraping gaskets. Let's move on to bigger and better things like messing up this seal as we put it in. <laughs> okay, it looks like it comes with this handy dandy install tool. And I think I got it going in the right direction. I don't know why I'm so nervous about this, but these seals are like 50 bucks, so I don't want to mess it up. So We'll use that, and we'll use my smallest hammer. It appears to be going in pretty good, pretty straight. All right, good, bad, or indifferent, it's in there. Oh. 
We're just going to throw a thin coat of silicone on this just for a little bit of added insurance and to kind of help hold the gasket in place when we're going together here. And above all, make a large mess. The instructions or on, on the sill it says install dry. It's got me a little nervous. I usually like to put a little grease on these seals when I'm installing them, but that's what it says. That's what we're going to do, I guess. See how bad I can mess this up. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> that is the way it's supposed to be. So that didn't quite work out like it was supposed to, so I'm going to drop this pan down just a little bit. So I'm going to clean out these threads that bolt the adapter on so when we lock tighten them it'll hold a little better. Get all the oil and gunk out of them. All right, so evidently this freeze plug, whatever um, upgrade doesn't work with this adapter. So that was, that was my fault. I should have done a little bit more research, but evidently the ZF bolt pattern bolts way up into here. So we're gonna have to get rid of that, which really sucks. Hopefully I got a freeze plug that'll work. Hard lessons learned here. So this is the adapter that adapts the 12 valve Cummins to the ZF6 transmission and it is from Diesel Conversion Specialist. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Alright, we're going to go ahead and use the blue Loctite for these. Uh, hopefully I don't regret that, but I have had red Loctite bolts that we're just about impossible to get out, so hopefully this does the trick. We'll give her a go. That's... Okay. I think I can get that oil pan. With all the bolts loose, I think it'll slide forward enough to drop out. Or, I'll be taking everything off again. That sounds like a more likely scenario, right? We do it nice because we do it twice, sometimes three times. Or seven. Or seven. All right, so according to the instructions, we got to do a little trimming here on the block. So we got to trim this ear off here and a little bit off here so the 6 0 star will fit. So we'll go grab a grinder and get that taken care of. So I got these. It's all trimmed up. Hopefully it's enough. We're going to throw the adapter plate back on and uh, go from there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and torque these down to 44 foot-pounds according to the manufacturer's instructions and then move on. So this is the flywheel adapter that needs to go on next before the flywheel goes on. So we're going to attempt to line up some holes here. Let's do this. Let's grab a bolt or two. Make sure at least a couple bolts are going to start. And then we'll give this a little love tap to get it on there better. Okay, I think we're golden. Now we got to put the flywheel on. This might take both of us to get this thing to line up. Pretty sure it weighs like 10,000 pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's heavy. All right, so that's bolts kind of threaded in there. That's how much you got protruding. Again, we're going to put a little blue Loctite on them and we'll torque them to spec. Okay, so we got the flywheel all torqued down. Now we're just going to clean it off real quick and get it ready for the clutch. So this is a pressure plate, and this here is a friction disc, and this is the clutch. 
it's very important that you get this lined up good. The better you get it lined up, the easier your transmission will slide in. If you get a little off, it's a fight. We're gonna line it up best we can. So it's important that the clutch goes in the right way. This surface here is flat and this is raised. So if you put it like this, it ain't gonna work. So the raised part has to go towards the pressure plate. If you put them in wrong, you'll be sad because you'll be taking it back out because it will just not work. Okay, this is the uh, alignment tool that came with the kit. And I've already double checked to make sure that it fits on the transmission and the input shaft fits in here so everything looks good. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw this clutch on, get it aligned as best that we can. So that alignment tool just goes through the splines and then it goes, ooh, that's a pretty nice tight fit. But see, even as tight as that is, there is a little bit of play. So you just wanna take a few minutes and just kinda, of, when you get the pressure plate on, just kinda of wiggle it around a little bit and try to find the center as best you can. And then you want to make sure after you get everything tightened down or kind of snug that this slides in and out really easy. And then your transmission will go in a whole lot better. Oh, heavy. Okay, so this slides in and out super easy. I think we got it pretty close. So according to the instruction, it says we got to torque this down to 18 to 20 foot pounds. So we got the adapter, the flywheel, and the clutch all installed. Now we're going to move on to the motor mounts and get it ready to go set in the truck. So these are the motor mounts and they're marked on them, passenger up on both of them. So let's figure out how these go on. Like that. I gotta get this out of the way. Got the passenger side motor mount on. Now we're gonna hurry and throw the driver side on. Keep going. Okay, that's as far as we can go until we set up the truck. So we got all the parts from Diesel Special Conversions on. We got the adapter, the flywheel, the clutch, and the motor mounts. So it's pretty much ready to set in the F450 frame. So we're gonna call it a day. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.